good. Everyone want to sleep already, right? It's almost time to go to bed. So uh, how about we wake up? Let's everyone uh, step up. Get up from your chairs. Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone. Yeah, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, stretch. Ah, to the sides. Yeah, to the other. Showing your belly from the beer last weekend. Yes. Really good. Now I'm gonna take a picture of you, everyone. You, woohoo! One more symphony camp. Now make a selfie, of course. <laughs> well, I promise this talk's not gonna take one hour like the last one. That's also gonna depend on how many questions you are gonna make. Um, but well, I think it's gonna be fast, like half an hour. So just a bit more before you can go home or drink some beers afterwards. <laughs> No worries, it's already broken, no damage. Uh, okay, so uh, let's talk about Symphony Flex. Something pretty new, uh, still in alpha stage, but it's gonna be released soon. Uh, but I forgot to introduce myself in the previous talk. I didn't forget, but since you're gonna see me twice today, I left it for later. In a nice GraphQL style. So uh, my name is Renato, uh, I come from Brazil. Uh, I live in the Netherlands uh, for the past two years. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Renato Maffi. I need a couple more followers, so then I have 400 followers. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I work at Enrise, this company at, uh, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, well, I, I have some certifications. I have Zen certification, also some Linux certifications because I like them really much. And I help co organize PHP Amersfoort, which is the city that I live at. And also uh, this certification group, which is uh, in Portuguese. But if you want to have a uh, try your Zen certification, you can go there. All the questions are in English, the answers as well. Only the discussions can be multi-language. Uh, and I also help to contribute to both PHP VCR and also the Overblock GraphQL bundle, which is the one that I uh, showed you on the previous talk. I just started there, so uh, I'm still not really, really deep into the details. And yeah, that's it. Let's talk about Symphony Flex. That's why we are here, right? So uh, before we introduce Symphony Flex, we have to understand one concept, which is RED. I don't know if you guys already uh, heard of it. It stands for Rapid Application Development. So if you come from the Java world, you may have heard about something called Spring Boot or something like that. So uh, this is all meant for you to uh, have something fast, not tailor-made like we, we had before. But uh, when we have RED, we have something made for fast prototyping. Uh, so this means you can get things out of the box really, really fast. So this also means you can have more interactive development. So uh, if you are using Agile in your company, having fast prototyping is also a nice way to make things faster and then go to the product owner and then go into the clients and etc. Uh, that makes you use less planning. So more prototyping, more testing, less planning. But we can translate it to software and that's gonna sound something like highly opinionated because if, when you have something which is really, really easy to set up, Usually it comes with default configurations, comes with default patterns. So that's how, that's why we call it uh, highly opinionated. Because, well, sometimes things are just like as, as, we, as they are. So uh, for some it may, might look like magic as well. Because simply, well, things just run out of the box. Never saw that happening before. Or maybe even black wizardy, like something really, really complex. But uh, we are going to see Symphony Flex is not that complex. Uh, before we jump into the Symphony Flex as well, uh, there is one big change happening. So uh, I'm gonna present you this change on Symphony, so then uh, we can follow easier, easily what's gonna happen afterwards. So uh, we are, when you install your new Symphony application, you are used to have the app bundle, right? Everyone knows this beautiful bundle in your kernel.php file. Uh, but now we are gonna have something called bundle-less. So this means Symphony 3.3, uh, 3.4, and Symphony 4. They are com gonna come by default as bundle as applications. So how does a normal bundle app looks like? Uh, this is something that, well, I, I bet 100% of you already saw it. So, uh, well, you have your normal app bin and blah, blah, blah. So uh, on the bundle as app, we have some differences. So let's start with the easy things. So uh, composer JSON, composer lock, always still there, all good. But uh, the license file, the PHP unit file, and the readme file are gone, so that's good. Less uh, trash on our repository. Uh, a few other easy things. The bin directory is still there, still the same place. 
Uh, the var directory is still there, still the same place. But then uh, the web, the web directory is gone and now it's called public. I think it's better, it's more standard. If you check other frameworks, public is usually uh, what you see. If you check Apache and Nginx, they usually call it public. Uh, well, the rest is just source. Uh, you can see the templates folder is gone. I'm going to show you later where these things are going to. And the test is also gone because, well, it doesn't want to be opinionated anymore on where you should put your tests. Uh, okay, so uh, if we check now the configuration, right? So this is the previous configuration we had on Symfony up to 3.2. So uh, we have this beautiful directory here called config, and then you have config dev, prod, test, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it looks for me quite a mess. Now we have something a bit more organized. So uh, inside config, first, we have a bundles.php file. You're not managing anymore the kernel.php file, the app kernel from your app bundle. Uh, you simply have bundles. It's, I'm going to show you this file later. It's really simple. And your configuration has a bit more of a, a drill down, like a few more directories now. So uh, we have here the package. And then uh, you have, for example, framework.yml. That's, that's kind of the main framework configuration file. And then we have the routing.yml. Observe, the, the YML uh, extension also changed. Now from Symfony 3.3, uh, you have to use the YAML, not just YML, it's a pattern now. Uh, when you are doing Symfony Flex and etc., it kind of validates it for you. Uh, and then uh, we have the stages that we had before as underscore, uh, dev, prod, and test. Now everything which is relay on the main director is actually prod. And then uh, you have the sub subdirectory, so dev and test. So that's now where you put your uh, specifically environmental configuration files. So that looks way more organized. And then uh, if we look into the source uh, directory, well, we simply have now a controller and then our kernel, which is not called app kernel anymore. If you do the get kernel name on the console, it's going to be source kernel. So uh, yeah, this is the bundle as application. It, it looks pretty nice. The controller is now just inside our source. So I think uh, when you do a nice architecture, if you guys are involved on DDD or hexagonal architecture, uh, or using like a lot of complex architecture in your application, having this thing more simple is actually good for you because it's easier to organize all your code. Uh, okay, so Symfony Flex is actually gonna be the default way for installing on uh, Symfony 4. So uh, what I'm presenting to you guys today, you're gonna use it on Symfony 4 onwards. So this talk is actually only useful for this year because afterwards everyone is going to get used to uh, Symfony Flex. But you can already start using uh, it on Symfony 3.3. .3. So let's say you are planning on going Symfony 4 uh, for your new applications. You, I would recommend strongly to already start using with Symfony Flex on 3.3 because .3, what's going to happen, 3.4 is going to be uh, LTS and then you're going to have an easy upgrade path to LTS. And then in the future when you feel prepared, you can go to Symfony 4 without the hassle to move from bundle S to from bundle app to bundle S application because you're already going to be in this architecture. So your life is going to be way, way easier. Uh, so uh, I'll execute, well, I'm going to do live demo. It's dangerous. Yes, I know. But uh, I'm going to show you what is that in a second. I first want to execute the command and see uh, if uh, the internet's going good. So can you read? Yeah. yeah, you guys in the back as well? Yeah, yeah? awesome. So uh, we are going to do here Composer, Create Project, Symphony, Skeleton. And of course, I'm going to do the 3.3 .3 version because I'm not crazy to go for right now. So um, SF can UA, yes. <coughs> Let this execute in while I tell you. Uh, so the, the Symphony Skeleton project, which I was using on Composer Create Project, it's actually how you bootstrap Symphony, right? Before you had the Symphony standard, which was basically you should just clone that crazy uh, project with the app bundle and etc. Now you simply have the Symfony skeleton and this project simply a composer JSON file. That, that's pretty cool. So let's actually see what is inside this file. So uh, when you do the composer create project, what you have is this. So a Symfony skeleton, a type project and blah, blah, blah. And you can see it only has like three requirements. One is your PHP version. So yes, Symfony Flex is only as for our PHP 7 and upper. Uh, so you better sh run 7.1 already, or 7.2, which is going to release soon. Uh, and they only require two things, framework bundle and the YML package. 
So pretty simple. That's actually how you bootstrap the new, uh, the new Symfony. And then uh, require dev, because you are creating your environment, require Symfony Flex and .env. So let's get back to our command. Oh yes, executed really fast actually. Okay, so uh, for those who don't know what Composer Create project does, it simply git clones this repository we are passing here. So it's cloning Symfony Skeleton. And then uh, I created a project called SF Camp UA. And then it's, it's cloning after cloning, and then it goes inside this directory, and then, start and then uh, runs a Composer install. Uh, this Composer install is then gonna install all the packages from, uh, from our small Composer JSON file. So uh, yeah, this is the standard Symfony. It's about, uh, now it's about 20 something packages. So it's actually really small uh, if you compare it to the Symfony standard edition, where you would have like more and more dozens of packages. So that's really simple. And then we can already see some stuff happening here. So Symfony operations, right after Composer install. What is that? So three recipes ran. So Symfony Flex, Symfony Routing, and Symfony Framework Bundle. OK, that's looking interesting. Uh, also, we have a what's next here. So you have like a developer's help message. Uh, we'll see what's happening soon. Let's uh, now get inside this new um, directory we just created. So SF Camp UA. Let's take a look, okay. I will do a git init so then we can actually keep track of what's happening here. Uh, I'm gonna add everything that is around, dot uh, env files. Yes, it's okay. I'm gonna commit everything, nice. So uh, what do we have here? So that's actually my basic Symfony application now. It's actually even smaller than what I showed you before from the bundle S because that's ex exactly the minimal installation ever you can have from Symfony. So composer files, config, really nothing yet. Just route services, packages is empty because we didn't install any package. Make file because now they, they provide you a make file with some uh, nice functionalities. And then you have the public index PHP and the source. But that's actually pretty nice. Let's check what we have on our make file. Uh, so for example, we can create a, yeah, do the cache warm up and then I create the server and clear cache, force the clear cache and etc. So uh, just a few functionalities, let's not worry about that. But we Symfony developers, we really like one command, right? Which is this one, Bing console. Yay, everyone uses that every day, right? It's the best, oh, oops. So uh, yeah, Bing console is not here, what happened? So that's when uh, Symfony, uh, Flex starts to get really cool. So not even the console is here anymore. So uh, if we think about this command here, composer requires CLI, it doesn't look like it's gonna run, right? Because, well, what is CLI? Uh, this package doesn't exist on uh, package gist. But somehow, Symfony Flex translated the CLI package into Symfony console. Uh, oh. That's cool, actually. And then uh, if we check what's happening, so it translated to, to Symfony Console. I already using the strings, uh, the constraints of the versions for my project. And then I uh, installing Symfony Console, nice, uh, writing my log file, and configuring, uh, configuring the Symfony Console. So that's my recipe running. So that's Symfony Flex doing certain stuff for me. Let's see what Symfony did then. Oh, sorry. If we do git status, we see now the bin directory back, okay. Let's see what we have there. Our dear Bing console is now working. It's really, really cool. So uh, with a simple require from Composer, I was able to install and configure my Symfony, uh, my Symfony console. So let's just add this uh, guy as well on uh, our Git. Let's say CLI installed, nice. Let's see what else is here. So uh, yeah, Composer, I'll, I'll leave Composer like this right now. But then um, other command that we Symfony developers like a lot is this one, right? Especially when you're just bootstrapping your application, uh, you just wanna come and say, hey, uh, run this local web server for me so then I can actually start playing around. So, oh, again, doesn't work. So what do we have to do? Let's install this stuff because that's how it works. Again, I can just use a simple name, a simple alias, like uh, Composer require a web server and then a Symfony Flex is gonna be able to go to this repository online and then I figure out what web server is and then I translate to Symfony web server bundle. 
In this time, it installed two packages for me. I don't care which ones. But then it also made the recipe run. So let, let's not spend more time here. Let's see what happens now. OK, so I have now a server running, a local server. Let's take a look. Nice. So, well, that's something. It's an error, but it's cool. So uh, we don't have a, a route for uh, slash. So, OK, that's expected. We don't have a home page. We have nothing there. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, really simple. You can now see exactly what's happening. So let's now split this thing here. Let's now, uh, well, I was giving a talk earlier about GraphQL, right? And one of you asked me how to install this package. So let's make a crazy try here. So in this case, we don't have the alias GraphQL because it's not an official recipe. Uh, but we can do uh, this, GraphQL bundle. So we are going to now uh, go directly to package gist and then ask, OK, please download over block GraphQL bundle. And then we are getting the version 091. It's going to install all its dependencies. And then we can see this nice question here. Uh, this is saying, hey, this recipe you are trying to install, this overblock GraphQL bundle, it's not in the main, uh, it's not in the main repository. Are you sure you want to install it? Yeah, of course I'm sure. Uh, I trust in this package. It's a good one. So, uh, okay. So uh, Symfony Flex interrupted my composer install process to get this recipe for me. And then uh, it went and then even asked me, are you sure you want to install that? This is not an official recipe from Symfony. And then I can just say yes. And then it insta installs it. So let's see what happens now when we get back to our browser. OK, so uh, we see a different error now. Uh, we see a bad request exception. And then a must provide query parameter. Uh, I don't know what is that. <laughs> Looks ugly. But uh, let's see something cool. Let's go to my route here and uh, do a slash GraphQL. So OK, wait. Uh, if I want to access the GraphQL, which is the tool for navigating into GraphQL APIs, uh, it says, hey, you cannot use render if you don't have uh, Twig available. Oh, wait, I forgot to install Twig. How come this thing can be so modular? So let's do it, right? So Composer require Twig. And let's see what happens now. So you can, I, I really like the server run thing because you can just see the errors here and then I see what's happening. So OK, so again, Symfony just installed a bunch of things for me. Let's see what's happening on our Git here. So we can see a bunch of files created already. So when I installed GraphQL, it created for me a config packages GraphQL file. When I installed Twig, it installed a GIF package Twig file. And the routes is also coming from the GraphQL package. And also the templates coming from uh, the Twig file. So uh, let's get back to our server and see what happens now. Oh, nice. OK, so I have now a GraphQL interface running just because I was missing the tweak uh, bundle. But then, uh, yes, it's looking better now. Uh, we can see here an internal server error because I still don't have like a query uh, defined. Doesn't matter right now. But uh, well, I have something running. If I do actually, um, if I come to the main page now, now I see JSON happening. So. Uh, why is this happening? Because GraphQL already took over my Symfony application and it's taking over my, my uh, main slash route. So uh, let's take a look into our console again. Oops, sorry. And then uh, let's debug uh, router. So uh, if we check, uh, the route slash is actually mapping to overblock GraphQL endpoint, which is the bundle that I have just installed. So. Uh, this means the configuration coming from this recipe, from Symfony Flex, I already configured also the routes for me. And that's pretty awesome. So uh, if we just check in config routes, we can see here a GraphQL file. And then, uh, yeah, still readable here. So you can see here exactly the name we saw before, over blog GraphQL endpoint. Uh, I'll put it on top. Yes. So then uh, over blog GraphQL endpoint. And then it's actually importing this route from the bundle. So uh, look how simple it is. So Symfony Flex can import it from me a simple configuration file, which then references to my main bundle configuration. That's looking pretty awesome, because I could just set up this. Of course, it doesn't work, but I could set up this really fast. So let's try to make it work. Of course, I have a schema here, so I don't have to type it myself. But uh, 
in this bundle, the overblock graphical bundle, if we go to uh, packages, oh sorry, config GraphQL types, I can just create here a query.yml. That's going to be our uh, configuration for each of the types we have. So let's do it. Let's now see what happens in this page. Nothing changes. Let's go now to GraphQL again. Oh, nice. That ugly error we had before has disappeared. So this means something's happening here. So uh, let's send this empty. OK, I must, I must provide a query parameter. Nice, because I sent just an empty uh, request. So let's do a query here. Let's name it, yeah, demo, because that's what we are doing here. And then if we start auto-completing the file that I had before, let me show it to you. So I had a field called hello, a type string which is going to resolve to word. Typical hello word, of course. So if we do it, oh, nice. So we already have a GraphQL uh, application just running. Like, if I wasn't talking, we could have set up this in two minutes. Of course, it took 10 minutes because I'm explaining each step. But then, uh, you guys, Symphony developer, are you missing something in this screen? Web profiler. Web profiler. There we go. Huh. Those fuckers. Oh, sorry. They didn't install web profiler. <laughs> Let's install it. So, this one is pretty nice because they not just put the web profiler, but they call it the, the debug pack. So this is going to come with web profiler, with logger, and uh, three other bundles or something like that. You are just going to see them right now. So there we go. So look. So var dumper, PHP unit bridge, web profiler, monolog, and easy log handler. It's really, really cool. Let's refresh this page. Now my cache is that slow, but uh, we are going to survive. Mm. Live demo. The gods of live demo, help me. Wait. My machine is going. Yeah, this web profiler is really heavy. Huh? There we go. So. Okay, the, the projector is uh, cropping a bit here, but we can see the web profiler is already here. And then uh, before when we had the error, it would be cool just to check the exceptions. But for now, we can simply just come here and then I see, oh, nice, a lot of things happening. So let's just open the profiler and then you can see uh, what happened, which, what was the request. You can see the tweak uh, things that Overblock did. So the GraphQL bundle actually processed a bunch of things. And then, uh, yeah, okay, my web profile is now working. So uh, that's pretty nice. But then uh, let's say uh, I don't like this web profile anymore. I want to kill it. Kill it with fire. So what do we do? Other, okay, let's just check one thing here again. Our, sorry, our git status. Let's see how many things we have already that Symfony is configuring for us. So you can see now the web profiler is a, has some configuration for both production, both test. Uh, and then uh, it's making some crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm tired of the web profiler. So I'm just going to composer, remove the bug pack. So with the same powers we have to add a package, Symphony Flex is going to give you the power to remove a package. What? You mean my cache here? So uh, you can see the cache is really improved, right? Because I didn't have to clear anything. So actually, the, the Symfony is detecting the changes and doing all the, all the cache warm up for me. So sometimes the request is slow, but yeah, you have a question? Oh, the dot env. I'm going to show the, the f yeah, I'm going to show the fun. No? Oh, maybe you, they are not running 3.3, .3, which is a stable version. Yeah, okay, wow. Uh, I'll, ch I'll check with you later. <coughs> yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so then uh, we removed the web profiler. So I expect now when I refresh, yes, my profiler is gone. So that's actually really straightforward. If we get back to our uh, Git files, we can just see here uh, a bunch of things just disappeared. So Symfony Flex just uh, and, and did <laughs> the job that it did before. And that's actually pretty simple. So. Uh, that's basically the demo. Uh, I want to get to you a bit into the theory behind it on how it works. 
So uh, yeah, we saw that um, thing. So uh, this was the main comment for creating the Symphony project. This was my live demo. Uh, but uh, this part we can just go. It was just to help me in case the, the live demo didn't work. Yeah, this is the question. I don't know if you guys could read. But uh, the, the thing behind this is simple. Uh, we tried to install the GraphQL bundle, which is not in the official Symfony repository. So uh, the Symfony guys, they created something called recipes contrib, so from contributions. So this means any of you can just come create your recipes, put in this repository, but then the user has to accept installing it, just saying, hey, this is not official. Uh, so that's why it has all this warning here. But well, it's pretty simple. The routes we saw before, tweak, yes, yes. Yes, so what, what are those recipes? Let's take a look. Um, so this is the page symphony.sh, which is already listing all the available recipes from both official ones and contrib ones. So we can see here the yellow badge, this is contrib recipes. The green badge, those are official recipes. And then we have the cool aliases that we saw before. So that's exactly how uh, those names were being translated. When I typed CLI on my, uh, as the first example, uh, my Symfony flag, so my composer locally, just went to this API, this website, and then asked, hey, how can you translate CLI? And then uh, it translated to Symfony console. So just, uh, just like this, just like uh, magic or black wizardry. So it's actually pretty nice. So uh, the, the bundle that I showed you is here, so overblock GraphQL bundle. So that's how it's registered now. So yeah, I would recommend you just to come here and then I check all the cool things. You can do like RESTful projects like this. You can create an admin interface just by doing Composer require admin. You can, you should just try out. Install a Flex application, and just start installing some bundles, uh, uninstalling them. Do this trick with Git so then you keep track on what they are changing in your, uh, in your project. And then uh, how these uh, recipes work? So the recipe is simply a, uh, a few configuration files. So uh, when you create a recipe uh, for Symfony Flex, you have to create this manifest.json file. And then uh, we see here the Symfony bundle, blah, 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 framework bundle, and this key called all. This means this bundle is going to be enabled in every environment. So let's take a look here if we do the bundles um, file. So that's exactly what's happening. So uh, if we check here the framework bundle, it's going to be all environments true. But if we check the web server bundle, which was the second package that I installed, it's only going to be available on the dev environment. So uh, that's how the package maintainers can actually tell which environments you should run certain packages. So for example, uh, the GraphQL thing should be enabled only on dev. That's why we have the routes on dev, because you don't want like, this debugging tool online, just like you don't want the web profiler running on your production environment. So this is how uh, it's been configured now in Symfony Flex. I think this bundles file is really cool and it looks really s more simple than uh, the old kernel. And if you use Symfony Flex, it's auto configuring everything. So I didn't have to put any anything on this uh, on this part. So that's pretty nice. So that was the bundles that we saw. And then uh, we also have copy from recipe. That's how the bundles are actually configuring themselves inside your applications. Uh, you can copy anything which is inside the recipe. You can copy configuration files, you can copy even classes, you can copy anything from public directory, and you can just copy it directly to the user's application, to the developer's application. You're gonna see what is changed, you might agree or not, you can change the files, delete the files, that's completely up to you. Uh, we can also do composer scripts. So let's say uh, you have some kind of generator in your bundle, a bundle which has some special feature, you can just make it run afterwards. So just like the Symfony Ascetic runs the assets install, you could configure your own bundle to do certain stuff after Composer installs it. So uh, this just links uh, the Composer to there. So I can show you to you. So if we check the Composer.json, we are gonna see here what happened. So scripts, auto scripts, and then the cache warm up, which happens every time you do Composer install, and also the assets install. And then uh, they are just mapping the post install and the post update towards these scripts, which are managed by Symfony Flex now. So if you want, you can just add a bunch of uh, things there. It just works. Uh, other thing we can do is the .env file. Uh, 
that's pretty nice because now in the Symfony 3.3 and Flex and etc., we don't have the parameters.yml file anymore. That thing's gone, thank God. So um, what, what they do now, they actually manage the .f files for us. So uh, how this actually looks like, I think it's pretty amazing. So they have namespaces. So uh, oh, let me put on top of the screen as well. Yeah. So uh, you can see uh, the file has now like this uh, template. So then they say, hey, this is the .env configuration for the framework bundle. So let's say you install Doctrine or install something that requires a configuration. Symfony Flex is also going to add this namespace and then uh, create the default configuration .env for you, which then, when you remove the package, it's also able to uh, remove this from your uh, .env file. So it's completely outmanaged. Uh, you can see we have some special variables which your application can use, so it's really, really configurable. Mm -hmm. That's the, the file that I just showed you, a bit better syntax. And then uh, we can also manage the git ignore file, which is also really amazing. So let's say your package is generating a specific type of file. Let's say the GraphQL one generates a dot schema file for GraphQL. You can just put that on the ignore file for the user. They don't even have to think about it. You own your bundle, so or uh, the developers of the bundle know what they are doing, so they can just come and say, hey, ignore this, ignore that. And it's even cooler because since those recipes are online, they are public repositories, uh, you can just, for example, if you find out the bundle is not ignoring something, you can just contribute and say, hey, please add this to the git ignore. And then uh, they can just, you can just do that and then uh, help a lot of people to prevent this issue. So the .env also looks the same way. Uh, we have all the namespaces, which then you can just uh, manage them afterwards. If you remove the package, they remove, same process. Looks pretty cool. Looks kind of the host's file when you use Vagrant or something like that. They have these special namespaces which then they can manage it. Uh, and that was actually that. So that's Symphony Flex. I promised you it was fast. <laughs> Thank you. See, that was fast, painless. No hard questions. Hey, hey. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, me too. So, great. Now I forgot what I wanted to ask. Thank you. Um, I think it was about if two um, bundles are configuring the same thing, so you have something like a race condition, is there any auto solver or just the last one wins? Nope. Uh, let's uh, check something really cool. So uh, let's check the repository here for Symfony recipes. So uh, when actually the package maintainers are making the recipes, they have to follow this book of rules here. Mm -hmm. So uh, Symfony has a bunch, bunch of rules. And actually all those rules are uh, maintained by a bot. So they have created a bot which validates your recipe. Mm -hmm. So you have no naming collision you're not violating the naming uh, factors of your application, etc. Oh. So it's like one package configures only itself. If a package needs another package, they are going to have to declare like, hey, install first uh, this package, so then, uh, or they put in the composer configuration, and then it's going to install first one and then yours, so no one gets uh, harmed. And if I do changes to something the package normally auto configures, and then I maybe, now it's a stupid question, if I remove it, it removes, but maybe I do a, a, an update. Um, yeah, and updates then are not going to change your files anymore. Uh, uh, this is only when you first install the package. So it's afterwards, really like. Yeah, so afterwards it's your problem. You have to maintain the, the configuration. Last so question. Um, if I co remember correctly, at SymphonyCon. Um, Berlin, they used a totally different command, so does that change the composer now, or do I remember it for also? Uh, well, I'm using the most recent one. Uh, I don't know if maybe they had other aliases or something. This, this thing is still off, as they say. But uh, as I could see, because I'm following the, the repository, uh, now it's getting to the stage where it's actually, that's going to be the final form, it seems like. <laughs> so I don't expect much changes here. Of course, I can't promise. I'm not a maintainer of the, the Symphony Flex. But uh, it's really uh, how I think it's going to be. But let's see. One thing I forgot Thank to you. tell you guys, uh, how uh, Symfony Flex works. It's actually just a PHP script, which then hooks inside Composer. So uh, every time you run Composer install and Composer update, it runs Symfony Flex to make these things happen. It's just like being installed inside Composer. That's just that. We could see it afterwards if we want to. More Any more questions? 
I have a question regarding configuration files. Do I understand correctly that it loads all files from config folder or you need to include them manually still? You have to include what? Include uh, every, every YAML file from config uh, directory or they are included by default? So uh, there are two things happening in the configuration directory. One is the, one is the restructure of the, the main folder, so with config and then packages. So then uh, when the new packages are being configured, they are going to be installed inside config packages. But uh, it's optional. Uh, there are bundles which don't require any configuration file. So uh, it might just be not there. But if uh, you want your bundle to be compatible with Symfony Flex, you have to follow the new structure. Other than that, you can't make it work. Yeah, yeah, my question is a bit different. Uh, I'm asking if you need to include new YAML file to some services YAML or they, they, they will be loaded, all files from config directly. Oh, no, uh, like uh, you mean if you are configuring something new, you have to put yeah, something yeah. manually inside the services. Yes. Uh, no, because uh, the bundles have the power to load their own services, right? So uh, the dependency injection is actually available inside the bundles. So they can out-configure themselves. Mm -hmm. Just like when you install Doctrine, I don't know, it has like 20, 30 services uh, installed just for you. You don't have to touch it. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's really straightforward. Uh, Renata, what happens with the versions? For, for instance, I install GraphQL, and uh, as I see, so I'm not specifying a version, so it's take its uh, last version, yeah? From the, from the GitHub repository. And what happens if I want to update update the, the package to the last version, what we, what we have available now? In, in, or for instance, I want to down, downgrade to previous version. Yeah, uh, you, 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 what we can see is that at those commands, they are actually simply composer uh, commands. So let's say uh, here we had the composer require the overblock graphical bundle, right? I could just come here and say I wanted the version 090. And that would work normally. Of course, before I install the package. Uh, what happens is like if you have a version which is not compatible with Symfony Flex, then you might not get the out configuration. Because uh, what happens here, I can show it to you. Uh, if we get to the contrib, for example, where I can show you the. So uh, those are all the contrib recipes inside the Symfony Flex repository. So that's the one I was showing to you, the, the GraphQL bundle. So then uh, if we check here inside of the package, we have a version 0 0.9. So this means if you install 0 0.8, you're not getting this out configuration. And this happens because the package maintainer has like to say, hey, I only support Symfony Flex from this version onwards. And that's actually cool because let's say my package or your package just uh, changed configuration. Uh, so then the new installations, you could say, okay, on the 0 0.10, you're gonna use these new configurations, this new manifest.json file with other things happening. So you can kind of still support old versions and then new versions. I don't think anyone is gonna make uh, uh, a new recipe for old versions because, well, you can kind of understand everyone using Symfony Flex now is taking the latest version. But in the future, let's say in one year, you're going to see a lot of packages with like uh, version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, with many configurations. It's just the bootstrap. So everyone is going to basically have one, two versions for now. But in the future, yeah, you can use old versions, new versions. Yes? Any more questions? No. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, everyone's here now. Right? Super great. Thank you.